I recently had an interesting discovery flying around Giga Texas about the Cybertruck. And on the 24th of July, you may recall this display of Cybertrucks, particularly the one in black. Also, on my 26th July video, I passed that same Cybertruck by the 4680s. Here it is in slow motion. And this turned out to be a quite the discovery. As is my custom, after flying, I post pictures on X, and this particular one got a very interesting response. As you can see, Bonnie Eggleson wrote, Nice shot of the dry cathode Cybertruck with a winky face. Almost as if they were hoping that I would capture the pictures of the Cybertruck. I responded back that uh, I was able to capture it two days before on Wednesday next to the Cybertruck graffiti trailer. Now, the interesting thing is, is Bonnie Eggleson is the senior director of Tesla's 4680 program. So this wasn't just a happenstance uh, posting. It was very exciting. And uh, that also prompted some additional questions that came out of the quarter two 2024 financial meeting where they talked about in July, they entered validation of vehicle testing for the first prototype Cybertruck produced in-house with dry cathode 4680 cells, a major cost reduction milestone once ramped. Now that also goes along with this response on X from Yogi Bear saying, hey, is this imported dry cathode material or is it produced here? And Bonnie responded back, it's fully made by Tesla and our mass production scale dry electrode machines. So all of this response really deserves a much deeper analysis and that's what I will do today. On the right-hand side of the screen, I've indicated where the 4680 battery cell production portion of Giga Texas is located. I will also be deriving a lot of the information from Kelvin Yang, who did a very good deep dive article on X about 4680 production at Giga Texas. Jordan from The Limiting Factor, who everybody should know, does a lot of great information about batteries and the technology with that and James Ma, who had some additional information about the overall 4680 production process. Here's a quick summary from Battery Day held a few years ago by Tesla, and we'll talk about the 4680 dry cathode battery and why it is so important. We'll start with increased energy density. It has a larger diameter and height compared to previous 2170 cells. This means that the battery can store more energy in the same volume. Another key benefit is cost reduction. The image on the right shows the difference between a wet process and the amount of equipment and factory size you would need versus a dry electrode. It's about a 10 time footprint reduction and 10 time energy reduction. It also eliminates the needs for solvents and it reduces environmental footprint for the battery production, which also reduces cost. The potential for improved performance is another key factor for the 4680s, and this is partly because of the increased energy density and also the use of advanced materials within the cell construction. Although not directly related to dry cathodes, the battery pack using a 4680 is a structural battery pack, and this means that the cells themselves contribute to the strength and rigidity of the pack, makes for a lighter, more efficient vehicle. One of Tesla's goals is to achieve cost parity with the cheapest battery suppliers by the end of 2024. The emergence of this Cybertruck and what uh, Bonnie said indicates that they are on track to achieve this. And of course, this indicates that the ramp of 4680s is continuing at a great rate and that Tesla is planning to start mass production of the dry electrode 4680s by the end of this year. To summarize, the 4680 dry cathode battery cell is a significant advancement in battery technology, has the potential to improve the performance, cost, and sustainability of electric vehicles Tesla will produce, starting with the Cybertruck. At the beginning of 2024, Tesla did attempt to do mass production of the dry cathode 4680s, but they ran into several technical challenges with the calendaring process. Now that is basically large rollers like you see here in this image that will roll out the dry cathode material into kind of ribbons that are then installed into the can to make the batteries. Now, even back in 2022, Tesla knew that this would be a problem. And you can see by this quote from Elon Musk, the dry cathode process encountered significant challenges. The cathode powder is very hard, sometimes damaging the electrode equipment, which we did not anticipate. Now, Tesla had thought that they had that uh, resolved by the beginning of this year, but that turned out to not be the case. 
One of the battery engineers here at Giga Texas mentioned that they only had a few customized and tuned dry cathode rolling machines, but the machines kept breaking down, and each time they did, it took at least 45 days for repairs. Of course, that meant that the battery team was wasting a lot of time during that process. So what exactly was going on? It turned out that the dry cathode material was so hard and difficult to work with that the calendar rollers themselves were delaminating. And this image gives you a good view of what that would be like. Now, the kind of chrome material that's on the rollers was being ripped off of the face of the calendar rollers themselves. And of course, this was not able to happen and have a dry cathode material that was usable in the batteries. These problems came to a head back in April and Drew Baglino ended up resigning. He was the SVP of powertrain and energy at Tesla. This caused Tesla to approach the technical difficulties in a new manner. That meant that they would need to replace some of the production equipment with more expensive equipment. And this also generated more R&D uncertainties as they needed to adapt to this new equipment. Shortly after that period of time, I started noticing a lot of a recycling of 4680 cans on the west side of the 4680 production cell portion of the factory. Also, I noticed a lot of these look like uh, uh, old rolls of dry cathode material being recycled. And if you look closely at the crates, you can see LG Energy Solution markings on the crates. And that's because during this time, Tesla was actually purchasing more expensive cathode material from LG Energy Solutions and a couple of other companies to try to get through this period of technical challenge. However, Tesla has now got to the point where they feel very confident that they have uh, passed the difficult R&D phases. They've got the new equipment installed and running properly, and they are about one step away from achieving the full version of the 4680 battery, and the design for the cathode of the 4680 has been finalized. And that's where the Cybertruck with the uh, message from Bonnie comes into play is Tesla is now testing that out and they are focusing on improving production yield efficiency and expanding capacity. They do plan to hit mass production and install the batteries with the dry electro technology by the end of the year. In fact, at the second quarter meeting, they were suggesting we may see that by the fourth quarter. Now you know why those Cybertruck images that I took last week were so significant and it spawned a lot of news and excitement around the Tesla community. I also hope that this helps fill in some of your information about the 4680s, the importance of the dry cathode part of the battery production, what's going on here at Giga Texas, and how this fits in with what we heard at the second quarter financial meeting just a couple of weeks ago. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do hope that you found this informative and helpful. And as always, thank you very much for your support. Take care.